What? <laughs> Wrong way. Hello, I'm that James guy, and this is not my KLR650. This is the Kill LR. Uh, as you know from the last video, it is seized solid. My buddy was riding it to work a few years back. It died on him. He parked it in the bushes. A few years later, I picked it up. Well, a couple months ago. Uh, you saw in my last video that uh, it was highly unsuccessful in figuring out what is wrong with the Kill LR. So today we're going to go about trying to figure out what is wrong with this bike. So we're going to start off with kind of the more common issue with these bikes. That is the doohickey. I've explained it in a past video. It is the kind of the balancer timing chain behind these covers right here. Uh, they have a idler down low that can break, come loose, do all sorts of bad things. And when that happens, it jams up the engine. It basically gets caught between the gear and the case and it seizes solid. Like this thing is seized freaking solid. I was leaning on the ratchet behind this plug here and like I was just tightening and loosening the end, the flywheel bolt. And anyway, got this bike all nicely propped up here. You can see what I did. I'm using my fancy, beautiful engine hoist to keep this thing kind of precariously level up in the air. Um, but I'm going to have to get the skid plate off, gain access to the side. I do not have a flywheel puller. You need a flywheel puller. But I'm told, which is why I jacked the back of the bike up, that the axle has the same thread pitch as the flywheel. So you can actually use it to remove the flywheel. We're going to test that theory out today. But anyway, let's get started in our autopsy, shall we? Oh no. This is actually the front motor mount bolt. I have to pull off this whole thing here. <laughs> we'll see what happens, folks. Oh, another extension. Well then, what else holds this on? Ooh. These foot pegs are actually way nicer than on my KLR. I should steal them. I need to move this gear shift. I think it's turning. Here we go. We're getting close. May as well keep the screws kind of together, hey? Next thing, we're going to remove the chain guard or sprocket cover, counter shaft cover. Oh, oh, this thing's dirty. Look at the junk and the dirt in here. The reason for me desperately wanting to move this is so that when this, when oil comes out of here, I don't want it landing on anything, you know? <laughs> Holy, this is horrible. All right, there we go. Wrong way. <laughs> we got oil dripping, which suspiciously looks like water. Well, that might explain a few things here, hey? Oh, I think we're getting somewhere. Get out of the way so you can see the big reveal. It's very magnetic because it's attached to a flywheel. Tell me we've got another connector here. Oh, we do. Okay, you can see the idler here for the starter. There's your starter, folks. And that just comes down, drives this idler, and it drives the gear. And then this thing can just kind of dangle. All right, that is the bolt that we very unsuccessfully tried to turn the engine with the other day. You can see here how seized this thing is. Yikes. There's some internal threads right here. This is where you would put your flywheel puller. This is tapered, right? So like, no matter what we do here, this ain't gonna come off just by tapping it or whatever. So normally you'd screw a puller in here. It would have an inside screw that would go ahead and it would push on the crankshaft. But I'm told we can cheat that the rear axle threads is the same thread, thread pitch as this. But now that I'm looking at it, I'm suspicious that that's not true. I guess there's only one way to find out. Oh, well, that was loose. No wonder this bike stopped working. I don't know. These threads don't look big enough for this flywheel. 
You know, this is not gonna work, folks. This axle thing was a myth, and it's not a true myth. Here's a bolt I found in my toolbox that is larger. Anyone know what this is? This is a Cummins N14 head bolt. Yeah, good old days. Anyway, looks very similar. However, this head bolt thread is bigger. When I put it in here into these threads for the puller, it's, uh, the axle would have to be bigger than this in order for this to work. So that's not gonna work, folks. I'm gonna have to get a puller or use my imagination. Well, let's put a pin in it for now. I tried everything. I rooted through my big bolt drawer from back when I was pulling wrenches on the big diesels. I couldn't find anything. There was a couple big giant cat bolts and stuff like that. Tried my puller. Remember I bought this to pull the harmonic balancer off my PT Cruiser <laughs> project. I forgot about that one until I found this, but this thing will not grab the flywheel properly. There's nothing to really grab. You just basically need to put a puller on there and give it some tension, then give it a whack and it should pop off the taper chaff. But anyway, I went on Amazon. This thing should be here in a bit. So I'm gonna have to continue this video another time. We are back with our Amazon puller. Look at this. 22 millimeter flywheel puller. We're just gonna give it a little bit of, a little bit of oil, a little bit on the end, and then we're gonna wind it in. What this is gonna do is it's gonna thread into the flywheel, push on the end of the crankshaft stub, and flywheel should pop off. Famous last words. I'm just gonna send it with my Milwaukee impact gun. Let's see here. Look at that, sent. It just pushed on right there. There is the keyway, woodruff key right there. You just need to give it a bit of a tap and out it comes. I'm thinking there's a bunch of gears or a bunch of washers. Oh, here's one. There's a washer, there's a washer. Don't wanna get this crap all mixed up. And the reason I'm taking this apart, folks, is because this is a common fail point on these bikes. And from what I see here, ooh, look at that. This thing does have the updated doohickey. So this is the infamous doohickey. This is the idler that tensions this chain. This chain, all it does is it runs the balance shafts. One up here, one up, up there. So the doohickey adjuster, you can see how it turned right there when I loosened it off. Normally it is a linear spring that pulls it to the side, but you can see here it has a torsion spring and this is the upgraded one. So if anything, this will just be stealing a good doohickey. That's all this might be just in case we need one on the good bike. But everything looks good in here. Chain's not piled up. I think our issue is certainly somewhere else. Just release this little spring here. So the whole procedure when you're adjusting the doohickey, all you do is loosen off this set screw that I just, or this long bolt that I just took off. When it's all together, you can access that bolt at the bottom here. You loosen it off, give this whole thing a couple taps with a rubber mallet. It lets this spring readjust this sprocket, pulls it into a certain amount of tension. You tighten the bolt back up and you're good to go. Nothing to see here. Everything looks fine. Oh, you see it there. So what this thing does is it turns on an eccentric you can see how that's turning like that. So in order to replace it with aftermarket, you actually have to remove this inner case. It's only a few bolts, not too big of a deal. That looks like a regular old metric bolt out of a bolt bin. <laughs> so I wonder if someone dropped one of these down into there somewhere. See, there's the weight. This is a balance shaft weight right here. There's another one up there. There's another one on the other side of this shaft on the right side of the engine. It also drives the water pump on that side of the engine. big snag. You'll notice the motorcycle is sitting in a different spot now. I had to put it away. Everything's apart. Everything is, well, 
disconnected from the engine except for a few bolts. But the main one is this stupid bolt right here. This actually goes through the back of the engine case, through the swing arm. It is loose. I can turn it in both directions, but I think the inner race of the bearings of the swing arm pivot, I think they're seized to the bolt. I beat on this thing hard with a hammer. It will not move. So, I purchased something that I've never owned before in my 20 years, 26 years of being a heavy duty mechanic. I always got the easy jobs like the engine, diagnostics, that kind of thing. I've never needed one of these persuaders before. Canadian Tire Maximum, $69.99. So, uh, well, with my, hopefully with my crappy air compressor, this will actually do something. We'll, uh, we'll go ahead and get our PPE on because things can get kind of crazy when you're dealing with a persuader like this. What? Here we go. Ooh. That's my compressor. Epic fail. So I think I'm going to have to take the whole subframe off and everything. I think there's only two actual bolts that hold the whole entire back end of this motorcycle onto the motorcycle, which is actually a known weak spot on early KLRs. Anyway, if I could get this shock out of the way, get this stuff out of the way, I can get a cutoff wheel in here and I'll be able to just kind of, I don't care if I've wrecked the case. We're beyond that now. Let's just chop this engine out of here. glory. Look at this thing. What a specimen. You saw there was a lot of grinding. Uh, that bolt actually was swing arm. <laughs> Pivot was not seized in the case itself. It was seized in here. See up in there maybe. Um, as this thing was spinning it's just the inside of the bearing race that is seized to the bolt so it just can't get through. So anyway that's that. Lots of grinding. May have cut myself just a little bit, but don't worry. It was a, with a cutoff wheel. It self cauterizes. Let's whip this engine apart and figure out what failed. Finally. All right, let the real fun begin. Now's the good part. Ooh, lots of silicone holding this valve cover on. Is that good or bad? It <laughs> can't be good. What is under the valve cover, folks? Ooh, things. There's your compression release for your uh, decompression when you're starting it. You know, if you look at these bolts, um, you can see that, here, let's zoom in. Notice how that one is very OEM looking, built in kind of a cap, uh, uh, built in washer, aftermarket, off the bolt, bolt bin in Canadian tire or something. This thing's been apart before. Um, did they lose the bolts? <laughs> it's like straight out of the bolt bin. Compared to that, well, kind of oiling. I guess that's how oil gets around up here. Here's the compression release. Oil feed for the head. Oh, don't forget to plug the intake, folks. You don't want anything bad falling in there. Ha 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 ha, funny guy. We got weird head bolts under here as well, folks. One at the back, one at the front. And after this, I think we're good to pull the main head bolts off. This is where my the old extendo ratchet comes in. This is the old Canadian tire special. Short, 
or long. Take your pick. That's not good. <laughs> okay, folks. Well, all right, I think we figured out why this thing was seized. <laughs> the rust. Oh, look at the rust. And the barnacles growing on that side of the cylinder wall. Nothing obvious as to why this thing would have failed in the first place, why it died on my buddy. I have a sneaking suspicion. It was electrical or something like that. But just being, you know, sitting in the bushes for a few years, water got in somehow. Uh, here's the clue, right? You can see this line of clean cylinder wall all the way around. And it is much higher on that side than it is on that side. So there was a layer of water sitting on top of that piston probably got in somehow. I don't know where that that layer of water got in now, but just that angled angled water line kind of gives it away. The barnacles, barnacles are not supposed to be in KLRs. And you can see this side, right? I mean, it doesn't look too bad other than the barnacles, but there's certainly water in here. So not worth reviving, especially considering the condition of the bike itself. There's that whole rear subframe we pulled off. My goodness. Uh, to the conclusion, I guess. So conclusion, we know why it seized. We don't know why the bike quit in the first place. Uh, but at least I have a few new tools I had to buy to do all this. Uh, the big giant hammer, the air hammer, both of which didn't help, but I was able to buy them and add to my tool collection. The flywheel puller, which will help me because I have that KLR sitting over there and I need to take it apart and check out the doohickey in that bike. So we got to see the doohickey, we got to see the balance shaft chain, and we got to see the inside of a KLR engine. I don't think this was a bad day, was it? I hope you found this useful or at least mildly entertaining. I will see you next time. <laughs> <laughs>